All right, what is up? This is Jordan from HardcoreMixing.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Beat Detective in Pro Tools to edit drums. So in my opinion, um, you should be using Beat Detective if you're editing drums in Pro Tools. It's just faster as long as you know the ways to kind of trick it into working right. So I'll show you how I approach editing drums with Beat Detective and can get it down to a pretty quick process compared to just doing it all by hand, which uh, can be just a waste of time when you have tools like this uh, to use instead. So before we jump into the editing, let's just check out the section I'm going to work on here. Um, I'll play the whole mix just to see how it sounds. Um, this, uh, in this particular track, we actually recorded the guitars and bass before recording the drums. So that's why everything is fairly finished sounding, even though these drums are not edited here. So let's take a listen. All right, so I'll work on about that much and show you how I edit this. So obviously the drummer here is uh, very good, uh, very solid, um, pretty close to all of all of the beats and sub beats here. So it's not going to be uh, you know super intensive job in terms of having to edit stuff by hand. But this is uh, where Beat Detective will work perfectly and save tons of time. So even though the drummer is really good here and really close to the bar lines already, it still needs a little bit of editing and. This stuff is pretty complex as well, like this whole section with the kick, snare, toms, and hi-hat is pretty busy. So that's uh, also a good, a good example for using Beat Detective here. So first step, um, I've already chopped to the region here where I'm going to start. One of the tricks to using Beat Detective effectively is, um, number one, working in smaller sections, and number two, trying to always have uh, your selections start on even bar numbers. So you don't want to start your selection halfway through a bar like this and have it end on a, on a weird, uh, uneven number of beats. Uh, it's always best to start on beat one and then select up until the end of another uh, even bar. So your first step is to separate the regions. So that basically means cutting the audio track into separate regions wherever there's a transient. So, so rather than selecting all of the drum tracks and doing this, I like to only select uh, the key tracks that uh, I need to trigger for separation. So that would be my kick and snare. The snare bottom is okay to be selected because it's just going to follow the snare top. Um, so kick, snare, toms, and hi-hat are what I normally select. And I ignore the overheads and room tracks um, just because I don't want things to be double triggered. You know, if the drummer hit to the cymbal a little after the kick or whatever, that's kind of common and uh, not something that's noticeable to the ear. If it is a noticeable difference, I can fix it by hand on a couple hits here and there. Um, but in general, I prefer to separate the regions based on the kick, snare, toms, and hi hat. So let's select a big chunk here. So again, I'm starting on a beat one and ending on a beat one. So the next thing here is to hit capture selection and then hit analyze. So then it's analyzed uh, the audio files I've selected here and then giving me these pink lines showing where it's going to where it's going to cut the uh, the regions. So you got to play around with your sensitivity here. Um, usually I have this around 35 or 40%. Since uh, this section has a lot of ghost notes that I don't really want to get into dealing with, um, I've set it a bit lower at 28%, but you can see as you slide this up and down, you start missing hits. So the trick is to kind of zoom in and go through it a little bit and see at what point, uh, like how low you can get it before it starts losing some of these hits. So as you can see, if I, if I lower this down too much, I'm losing this snare hit, some smaller kick hits, some tom hits. So I'm going to bring that up until it looks like I'm getting all of the hits, but not getting too much of the ghost notes. So that looks about right. Uh, another thing I want to show you here is um, trigger pad. Make sure that's set uh, to about five milliseconds. And basically what that means is that right here on this um, purple line that you see, the trigger pad means it's actually going to cut the region a little further back. So it's not going to cut it right at that line. It's going to cut it five milliseconds back. And that will be uh, that will just help with uh, when you're smoothing the edits later on. Before we hit separate here, we want to make sure we select the rest of our drum track so I'm just going to use my keyboard shortcut to select down here so I'm getting my overhead china and room tracks here 
and that will just follow uh, the separation lines for the tracks that we had analyzed before. So let's hit separate. All right, so now we've got all our separate regions here. So let's dig in. I can enable my drum group now. Let me just get rid of this little section. And like I said, we want to work in small sections. So we're going to switch Beat Detective to the region conform. So let's check out maybe two or three bars worth here. So that should be all right. It's pretty tight. So you're going to select the section that you want to edit hit capture and then this section contains 16th notes on the drum so we want to make sure um, that that's selected and this is a useful tool too if you're editing a section that only um, uh, contains eighth notes um, then you want to select that that's going to be more accurate so always select the most accurate option here so 16th notes I'm going to leave all of this unselected because I just want it to straight snap to the grid so we've hit capture and then we just hit conform so now it's automatically moved it to the nearest bar line let's hear how that sounds All right, so that's good. We've been, we've now quantized that section, um, but you notice we've missed some of the symbol hits since I didn't analyze those before. That's all right. I prefer to work like that, like I said. So I'm just going to tab to that transient of the crash here and just manually move it in there and then catch any other sections like that that I missed. There's another one. Just going to snap it in, make sure we're not covering up any other hits. There's some snare ghost notes in here, but um, they're not necessarily supposed to be played uh, in time per se. So I'm just going to leave those. It's going to help with the drum sounding more natural anyways. So I'm just looking at the overhead track here and um, trying to make sure all the cymbal hits are right on. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's keep going. So I think the drummer's close enough on these hits that I should be able to do this whole four, four bar section. So again, we select it, hit capture, conform. Looks pretty good. Let's take a listen and then fix anything that didn't get, get caught by Beat Detective. So already we can see this hi-hat hit here wasn't caught. That section's all good. And you don't have to worry about kind of the clip clicks and pops that are caused by the region separations here. Um, we're going to do use Beat Detective to smooth all of that out later. So you just got to kind of get used to ignoring those sounds. So let's select the next few bars. Conform. Once again, we've got this hi-hat hit. It's pretty close, but we'll move it anyway. All right, so that's a, a whole busy tom section that would have been uh, pretty time consuming to edit by hand, and we've just done it in you know, a minute or two. I don't, I'm not sure how long it is, but it's pretty quick. Um, so let's move on to this next section here. So we can see that our trigger point here, it's um, looked at the hi-hat instead of the kick. So that's all right. Basically what you do is just cut the region ahead of that, bring it back, and then we're just going to manually tap to the transient and select the kick instead. So normally what I do in these situations where um, the first hit on beat one is early is I'll select the entire um, song from this point to the end using option shift return. And that just selects uh, from that point forward. And that way I can just move everything forward and it's a, it's a lot simpler than having to trim the region and everything and just move that one hit. So now I can select a few bars here. Let's try about four bars again. Capture, conform. Here's a hit where we've got the kick and the tom hitting at the same time. 
it sounds fine uh, just because in reality there's really not that much space in between them and that's going to sound natural you don't want to start moving individual tracks like like this or anything that's just going to sound weird so um, usually I'll leave it like that sometimes if there's more of a gap I'll kind of straddle the bar line so one drum is hitting a bit before one's after that can usually sound pretty good but I'm just going to leave that how it is That section turned out pretty well. Let's keep going with the next few bars. And then we'll probably wrap up the video tutorial at this point here. So let's capture this, conform. All right, so let's stop there for the purpose of this tutorial. We've just edited a pretty good chunk there in just a few minutes. Um, but now let's deal with the uh, clicks and pops and all the edits that we've done. So what we're going to do is select um, the section that we've been working on. Um, if you're doing a whole song, in this case, you would just select the entire song altogether. Hit Edit Smoothing. And the main control you need to look at here is Fill Gaps and Crossfade. And then I usually use a crossfade length of 10 milliseconds. I find that works well for, uh, for editing drums. So let's capture our selection again, hit smooth. So now it's going to just pull back some of the regions, fill the empty space and create crossfades in between. Okay, so that took a minute or two for Pro Tools to uh, edit and smooth all of those um, cuts and put in the crossfades. I just skipped ahead in this video here just to make it quick. So let's uh, now listen back and kind of see see what it sounds like, see if there's any crossfades that we need to adjust here. Usually I'll turn the click off here so I can really listen. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically trying to zoom in a little bit and do my best to watch um, and look at the audio forms as it's playing to try and listen and see if anything looks, uh, looks out of whack here. Like for example, this hit right here, uh, this bell hit is a little bit inside the crossfade because it's a bit early compared to the kick. So I'm just going to trim back this crossfade. There we go. there we go that all sounds smooth last step is just to, to select um, everything that you've edited uh, in the case of editing a full song you just select the whole thing hit option shift 3 to consolidate boom perfectly edited drum tracks pretty complicated uh, busy section here uh, in a pretty short time so hopefully uh, that helps answer any questions you guys might have about using Beat Detective and Pro Tools I know a lot of guys uh, working on hardcore and metal they just slip edit everything by hand um, I don't think that's the fastest way to do it I definitely recommend learning how to use Beat Detective effectively and it'll speed up your workflow a lot all right thanks guys give a thumbs up if you liked watching this video and head over to hardcoremixing.com to get some free stuff and watch some more free videos thanks